More content from Murph 2019. I'm here with uh, Zesty Technologies. You guys make the Nimble. It's quite, it's quite something. It's, uh, it's, it's something I was skeptical of for a while, but you know, seeing it in person is, uh, yeah, has has kind of converted me almost. But first, a shout out to uh, Prusa Research who have made my trip to Murph 2019 possible. Um, they're showing off the SL1 and CW1 cleaning and curing station, and the goal is to make the high detail resin printing more accessible and less messy. So check it out at the link below. And yeah, what is the Nimble by, by Zesty Technologies? The Nimble is a remote direct drive extruder. And what that means is that we move the stepper away from the moving carriage and we essentially get the benefits of a Bowden without the detractions of a Bowden and the benefits of a stepper without the detractions of a stepper. So direct drive with extremely white, lightweight uh, assembly on the carriage. So it's uh, for, for the people in America, it's less than an one ounce. And for anyone in metric, which is the rest of the world, it's less than 27 grams, including the fixings. So you're taking the, the stepper motor off of your carriage, but you still have a direct drive. Correct. And the center piece of this is, I, I don't, unfortunately don't have enough hands, yep. is basically this. So that's a flex shaft that you might know, well, you, people might know flex shafts from Dremels and stuff, but Correct. the thing is this one is quite rigid yes. when it comes to torsion. We selected this specifically for having low rotational flex, um, and I can't really tw twist it. And because we have the 30 to one gear ratio inside the Nimble, any flex that was there is essentially removed. So, so this is like a special, bra not braided, but twisted steel cable and it's got crimped ends. It's like, yeah. So yeah, and squared and the wires are counter wound in different directions. So it works well in both directions for retractions and so on. Yeah. All right, so that, that's that's the core of it. So, okay. If we, if we look at the machine, we have a few components. So the motor is, is off to the side and we can see that, that loop that just goes to the tool head. Now, this is the actual extruder part to it, I guess. Um, well, it depends on, on how you want to call it. Yes. The entire thing that's, is the extruder, right? That's the nimble, as we call it. And yeah. essentially, this is the drive system for the nimble. And we have what we think is the easiest to change filament system in the nimble, where you pinch the breech, what we call, open it, pull the filament out, uh, it's really great if you have a partial blockage, it, you can just feel how it's working, push filament through, replace filament, close the breach, and start printing again. So all the parts for the Nimble unit themselves, or m most of the parts, are, are actually 3D printed as well. And these are these are aluminum, magnesium, something like that, right? Uh, no, it's actually HP Jet Fusion, so it's... it's it feels like metal, but it's not. Correct. Uh, this is the raw material from HP Jet Fusion, which is PA12 nylon. Okay. So this will work in a heated build chamber, 90 degrees ambient, not an issue. Uh, that's below the, sorry, yeah, that's below the melt, starting to melt temperature. So we initially did a Kickstarter where we were planned to injection mold and we did not reach our goal, which turned out to be the best thing that could have happened to us because we couldn't afford to build molds, which would have locked us into a single design Whereas using additive manufacturing to create the Nimble, we've been able to iterate the design constantly and make improvements. So, so the, the Nimble that we have now is actually a better product because you didn't get funded on Kickstarter. Correct, yes. And the, the Kickstarter wasn't a, uh, was not like the flex funding where you get the partial. You, you literally no, no. get nothing out of that. We got money out of it, no. Yeah. Uh, we got, all we got was a list of people who had backed us and we emailed them once we bought it to market. And nearly everyone bought it, which is, was awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, well, but that, that's a great story. Um, I think it, it shows that even if you're not successful on, on Kickstarter, especially if you don't have a Kickstarter uh, to, to kind of kick you off and maybe push you in the wrong direction, um, can be a good thing. Yeah, what it did for us was show that there was enough market to, like, when you have a product, you're not sure if there's a market for it. That showed us that there was a market of a size and gave us enough confidence to push ahead anyway. And it's paid off. So when it comes to the actual design of the Nimble unit itself, so the casings are 3D printed, um, but the actual mechanical drive components are not. So you've got gears and a, a drive gear. What's, yeah, so we have what's, a the, what's the story? That is made of POM or a seedle. Uh, the worm wheel is made of POM or a seedle. All the parts in the Nimble are custom designed for our unit. So we have a steel hub and that all goes together. 
and it's shipped with lubricant. These don't wear out, I guess, because there's very little... Well, I guess there is some torque on it, but not enough for, not for enough. the pump to break. The only time it would wear out was if someone wasn't keeping track of how well lubricated it was. Right. Yeah. And the, the gears or the teeth on the hob, those are custom-made as well? Correct, yes. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's not just some spur gear that you're no, putting we, in there? We actually had to design the tool to cut it for our manufacturer because they couldn't figure out how to cut it. So the Nimble fits on... How, well, how does it fit on printers? Do you have custom mounts for it or is it a standard? And hole pattern? So the whole sort of overarching um, want behind the nibble was to have a standard unit so that this unit here could work on any printer and so we develop adapting mounts for any printer and we currently have around 100 mounts. They're all on Thingiverse including step files for download so if anyone wants to modify and for any customer who has a printer that we don't have a mount for, we develop the mount free of charge. So, so you mentioned the the actual Nimble unit has a 30 to 1 gearing ratio on it. So, so that is from the shaft of the motor to the actual spinning action of your right. of your drive gear. So the, the drive gear is relatively large. It, it's not one of those super thin diameters. Mm -hmm. But I got to wonder, like that, that's a pretty high uh, drive ratio. So you get a lot of torque, right? Yeah. But do you run out of speed at some point? Uh, depending on the control board, it might be problematic for some people, but you can change the micro-stepping, which will allow you to achieve the speeds. Yeah. So we have, we have users who are using Volcanoes and printing reasonably fast. I wouldn't say insanely fast, but we have a lot of people who are printing, you know, well above 100 millimeters per second without issues. Yeah. And obviously you do get a ton of torque out of the system. We had a customer who had a, a separate spool get tangled up and it lifted their printer off the table. Yeah. And even something like a pancake stepper could do that, right? Yes. We have, used, we have customers who have changed to just a NEMA 8 and it works fine with a NEMA 8. We recommend a, a pancake 17 or 14. Yeah. But then again, because the motor is just off to the side, it, it doesn't really matter what Wait, size it is. It doesn't right? matter, no. We're just going for low rotational inertia in the mechanism of the stepper for quick retracts. So how many how many units have you sold so far? Or and or how long have you have you been around actually? When when was the Kickstarter? So we did the Kickstarter late in twenty sixteen. And we put the shop online January twenty seventeen. And it took us we were working through manufacturing issues and so on. So we didn't actually start shipping it until May twenty seventeen. And only one person cancelled their order which was amazing, amazing, and, and placed the order again once we were shipping. <laughs> so it's, you know, if, if you're, I believe if you're community, communicative with your customers through a, like a Kickstarter and these sorts of processes, they're, you know, they're quite willing to go through the journey with you as long as they know what's yeah. going on and, and you're actually going to deliver something. That's, yeah. Yeah. I think that that's a really important part for any product that you ship. It, like, it's okay if you have delays as long as... Or if it's okay to have delays or to have long lead times or all that as long as you're very clear about those and, and you know, set expectations right. Um, one more thing that, that you, you're just starting to show off is, is this guy right here that I don't have a hand free to show. But... Um, so that's an E3D V6 block on there, and right. it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really have anything on, on top. So what's going on there? Right, so this is called the Creo. So also with the Nimble, we actually had our customers choose the, the name for the product. Uh, we have a private Discord for customers, and we give almost 24-7 support because of our locations around the world. Uh, but this is a water cooling unit that will go on a V6 block, uh, quite small, and weighs about 19 grams if you take the block away. And it's that, that, is, that is the same HP uh, yes, process. So it's using the same uh, sintered nylon and an aluminium core, and it has adapters for groove mount, the threaded mount on a smart effector, and so on. Yeah, and yeah. It, I, I guess it's, it's weight maybe also, but heated chambers uh, right. is, is yes. where that yeah. really comes in handy. Yes. Yeah. And we've run it at insane temperatures for long lengths of time, and the water just didn't heat up. So. Yeah, obviously, there's not a lot of power that goes through a heat break. It's right. just, it, it just needs to be cooled somehow, right? Yes, yeah, that's right. Um, so the Nimble, well, is that something that you're shipping already? We just started shipping before I came uh, to Murph. Uh, so we have products ready to ship once I'm back in Australia. Okay, okay so that's shipping. Uh, how much for that and how much for the Nimble? Uh, this is about, it depends on the options you get, but around about 60 US. And that, that includes everything that um, down to 
Yeah, but yeah. It, it, it's to a point where you can screw in your heat break. Correct. Yes. And it comes with some tubing. And we do sell kits with everything because we're an E3D um, Reseller? partner, reseller. Thank you. Yes. Um, and, and we have um, radiators and pumps as well if people wanted to go that far. Yes. Uh, the Nimble itself works out to be about 120 uh, US. Uh, it's 89 euros, and we ship worldwide. So that's in line with other extruders as well, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Cool. Um, and where, where, where do you sell? Where can people get that? Uh, Zesty.tech. Z-E-S-T-Y dot T-E-C-H. Yeah, 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 there we go. And on your t-shirt, by the way. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, so if, if you're wondering if, you know, whether we, we look a bit tired or not today, uh, it is, what, what time is it, 7, 7.15? And Murph has been crazy. Like, <laughs> at 3 p.m. today, you literally couldn't walk through here. So this is why we're filming this stuff at night when everyone is worn out already. Um, so, yeah, thank you for, for taking the time and, and thank you for, for keeping up with, uh, with the events and with the late filming and all right. that. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah um, really exciting stuff. I'm, I mean, I'm always happy to, to see people try new things and, and make new products instead of just, you know, doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, best of luck with the, with the product. Thank you, I really appreciate it.